welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. Hi, my name is Ruti and I'm so excited that you're here. This video is going to be my October, November wrap up and I know we are in December and I didn't do my wrap up last month because I've actually been having a bit of a slow reading month slash two months now. And it's mainly because I've just been really busy with work and I've had other commitments and I've just been filming videos and I don't know. I think there's just been a lot of external factors, but I still have wanted to read. I just haven't had the time to, but I have read some good books in the past two months. So I thought I would go through them with you, Let's talk about them. Some of them are some favorites, some classics that people love and adore on book talk and stuff like that. They're not actual classics, but you know what I mean. And some are some new releases and then just some of some books that I've been meaning to pick up for a while and I finally got to. But yeah, I'm very excited to do the little stack I've got. And honestly, because some of these I've read like in October, like I honestly kind of have forgotten that I read them. Not in a bad way, not that they weren't good. It's just, I've just been like, whoa, October was such a long time ago. It feels like a lifetime ago. So yeah, grab a little Bev, a little hot chocolate or a iced chocolate. I know it's pretty hot where I am right now. So maybe a cold drink would be great. Um, I've got my little Stanley here. I actually put some stickers on my Stanley, which is really cute. I popped these little cherry ones and I got the sticker when I did my blind books and I got it from the Etsy seller, which is really cute. So I popped it on my Stanley. Um, this is a fake Stanley, by the way. But yeah, I love my little Stanley. So I'll pop that here. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to get straight into the wrap up. And yeah, okay. I'm going to start off with my October reads and then we'll do November because I didn't read much in November. So I read five books in October and they were kind of a bit of a mix of genres. Well, pretty much two genres. I read a bit of fantasy and a bit of romance. The first book that I read in October was Reckless by Elsie Silva. And I was very excited to read this because I feel like every month I've been reading one Elsie Silva book and like kind of going through the Chestnut Spring series. And I did finish it this month. This is a story between Theo and Winter. And I know a lot of people were very excited to see this because there's a bit of an age gap there. I'm pretty sure there's a bit of an age gap there. I honestly can't remember. But it also has like a one night stand to pregnancy trope, which I don't even know. Is there a name for that trope? I think it's just a pregnancy trope. I don't know. But I think a lot of people were interested and intrigued how Elsie was going to do this. And I feel like that one can be a little bit tricky. I feel like I've not read many pregnancy trope books, if any at all. I'm not too sure. But I wanted to read this because because obviously Chestnut Spring series, I wanted to continue it. I was intrigued by this one and wanted to see how she did it. And I really enjoyed this one. I think Theo was so, so sweet. And like, I felt like he was just doing what he needed to do to prove to Winter and to everyone that he was like up for this challenge, up for this crazy thing that happened in his life. And like, I just, I really loved how it was set out. I felt like it made so much sense and their chemistry, like, and the way he was so patient and so caring, like he was such a lovely guy. I feel like in his situation, not a lot of guys would like stand up and like do the right thing or like realize what they need to do. And I feel like a lot of guys would have just been like, whatever, it's not my problem anymore. But he really stood up and he just stepped out of the plate is what I'm trying to say. And he just like loved Winter so much. And Winter obviously loves him, but I I think she has a lot of trauma a lot of things that she needs to work through or she has worked through throughout this book and i think having like the baby and obviously him like just made her more secure in herself and secure in the relationship and things like that but i just like love the series so much so there's like not really much i can say else but i gave this one a 4.5 i really really enjoyed it the next book i read this month was a fantasy and it's a fantasy that i've been wanting to read for a little bit i have heard so many things about it and i remember when i picked up the second book in the series like i went and got it from someone on facebook marketplace and it literally told me how much they love the series so it just made me want to keep reading this one even more i haven't gotten to the second book yet but i will in the near future and the book is none other than the prison healer i heard so many things i feel like it just like really got popular recently or like maybe it's just like the videos i've seen or the tiktoks i've seen um not too sure but i finally read the prison healer and i really enjoyed it i loved it so much it was such a fun really interesting read the ending yep yeah. The ending got to me so, so hard. Like, I had no idea what to expect, no idea what was happening. And then, like, I feel like that, like, last 100 pages, it just felt like nothing was making sense. And it was, like, just a lot of action, a lot of things happening. But I was like, where is this going to go? And yeah, the ending did it for me. So I'm very excited to read the second book. This one basically follows Kiva. She is a prison healer in, like, this prison called Zalendov. And it's obviously a fantasy. It's just a different world. And she has family on the outside that she doesn't really have contact with. But the only way she, like, communicates with them are these like really 
small notes that she gets in this like mysterious, not mysterious language, but it's like a language that only they understand. And so that's the only way she communicates with the people outside. And they basically, or he's like promised her that they're going to come and get her and they're going to come and get her. And she's been waiting for like 10 years and no one's come. But this time the note was a little bit different and the note was saying that don't let her die, we're coming. And the person that she has to save is the rebel queen. And the rebel queen is very hated between all the kingdoms and stuff. And basically they sentence this rebel queen to do these trials, but she's like literally on her deathbed, like she cannot move or anything. Sakiva ends up volunteering to do those tasks on her behalf. Yeah, that pretty much forms like the crux of the story. But yeah, it was such a good read. So, so fun. A little parts of it felt like slow. You were kind of really in her mind, but I feel like at the same time, the ending was just so crazy that like, I don't know, I just, I found the ending really crazy and I felt like if I would go back and read the book, maybe I would pick up on it like way earlier. I gave this one a 4.75, so it was definitely a really, really good book and I really enjoyed it. And then after that, I really missed Chestnut Springs because I read Hopeless, which is the last book in this whole series, which makes me so sad. But I do know that Elsie Silver is coming out with a new series. I think it's the Rose Hill series. I'm not too sure, but it is sort of set in the same world as Chestnut Springs and everything. I really wanted to read Hopeless and sort of see like how everything is going to tap together. So it is between Bo and Bailey. Bo is one of the brothers in the Eaton family and Bailey is a bartender there and basically their families kind of have a weird rivalry because Bailey's family is kind of like screw-ups and the town doesn't really like them um, but they all like Bailey and they like support her in her bar and stuff like that and she just has big dreams of like you know saving up money and going to school things like that so there is a bit of an age gap between them as well and I feel like this one was probably the one relationship that fell flat for me. The relationship I kind of understood for a bit but I feel like I don't know the way this was written was kind of different to how the other books were written it just didn't hit the same for me I didn't love them as much and I honestly probably place them as like my least favorite couple but I mean I still enjoy like the story because I got to see everybody else and I did enjoy like their story it's just like yeah not my favorite couple really and I like that at the end they kind of like tied up everything together with all the family members and all the partners that they now have it's just very very sweet okay this one a 3.75 which is probably my lowest rating for the Chestnut Spring series but I think like overall like the whole series is a five star series for me as on an average so yeah that was the third book I read in October the next book that I read in October was A Court of Thorns and Roses I've seen everywhere this is what I was referring to when I said um, there's a classic in here that I've read which is obviously not a classic not at all but it is definitely one of those books that like is very very beloved on book talk booktube and all of that so I know people very much adore this book and this series and a lot of Sarah J Mass's books so I was curious and I was like I'm gonna finally do it I did I did kind of buddy read this with a friend we were both sort of reading at the same time so we we're kind of sharing our ideas as we read and after we read as well I have a bit of like mixed feelings about this now like after you know reading um other fantasies and kind of like having the time to reflect on it I don't know if I really love this that much I felt like there's definitely been better fantasies that I've read like even the prison healer was a much better fantasy in my opinion I think I like those kind of high stakes fantasies better than this sort of fantasy where it's a lot more world building and the world building is like very intense I don't know maybe that's just me like I loved Powerless and I loved Prison Healer and like books like that I'm not too sure where I stand with this one I think I'm still gonna give it four stars because I did enjoy it but I've not felt any urge to read the second book or any of the rest of the series so I'm not really sure where that puts me and then the last book that I read in October is another little romance another short sweet fun little romance and it is The Bodyguard by Catherine Center and I love this book it was so so sweet and it was just such a cute little romance and basically this follows basically this follows jack and hannah hannah is a bodyguard and she is like part of this like bodyguard agency protection place and jack is a famous actor and basically he's been getting some death threats and he needs protection so his management organizes protection through hannah's agency and hannah is his bodyguard and it's kind of cute because you know it's like the girls with the bodyguard in this scenario and it's, it's just very sweet and if you read it it just feels like a very fun little rom-com it reminds me of like the proposal like that kind of era of rom-coms i miss that era of rom-coms i don't know why people have stopped making cute little rom-coms like that but anyway it kind of reminds me of that but yeah so it's just about hannah and jack they're kind of like figuring out like the boundaries of the relationship and his family's involved as well because they're staying at like his family's ranch that sort of all plays into it and they have to sort of fake date so the family doesn't know that he needs a bodyguard and like you know tensions are high and I feel like what more could you ask for it's just a fun little rom-com um but yeah I really enjoyed this one and I gave this one four stars
And then these are my November reads and I read four books in November so you guys can really tell that I've had no time in the last two months to really pick up a book and sit down and read it but I have enjoyed the books either way so I'm going to go through them really quickly with you guys. The first book that I picked up was Normal People. I've been wanting to read this one so I finally bit the bullet but I finally did it and I read Normal People and let me tell you guys I get the hype. Okay, I get the hype. I get the Sally Rooney hype. I really literally have tabbed so many pages. Like, there's just so many quotes in this book. And I am a Connell and Marion stan. Like, I get it now. Sally Rooney really did something with this book. And it, like, has changed me forever. I posted on my story that I was reading this book. So I spoke to a few people who read it as well. And it was so interesting seeing, like, the different POVs. And seeing how, like, people took this book. Because I felt like, yes, this book is about, like, Connell and Marianne and their relationship. But also, it was so much about them being individual people. And, like, who they were at their core. And, like, I don't know. Like, I felt so seen and heard with the way Connell is like even with the show like I always get like little edits of you know Connell and Marianne on my TikTok and stuff and they just are so relatable in the sense that like the way anxiety is shown in Connell and the way he like deals with things I really just felt like I related to him so much and same with Marianne like there's just so much about them they're such beautiful complicated characters and they're just real at the end of the day like a lot of people like everyone is complicated in their own way and everyone has their own like things that they're hiding and things that they're feeling and I don't know it just felt like a real story and it was nice to have like a real story in between like romances and stuff in which like sometimes people can be very one-sided and like that's not a bad thing you know that's what that genre is for but I really enjoyed this as like a literary fiction kind of vibe and as you can tell from the tabs I just really enjoyed the writing as well so honestly I think I'm just gonna give this a five star because like I still think about this book day to day so I think this needs to be a five star so yeah the second book that I read in November was Love Redesign by Lauren Asher and I've not read anything by Lauren Asher before I do have like the fine print and I still need to go through that series but I wanted to try this this is a new release and this is a new series that she's come out with which is a lakefront billionaires and I really really enjoyed this one it was such a good book it's quite thick it is a bit of a mammoth but I actually enjoyed this a lot um, this one follows Julian and Dahlia and they're both basically like childhood friends slash rivals. Like, their mum's are best friends so they've grown up together in this small town and he is like a billionaire. He works in like construction and stuff and she is an interior designer. She's kind of famous. Some stuff happened in her personal life so she's gone back home to like spend time with her family. And they meet again and they have this like undeniable attraction and chemistry. Like Julian is a access service king. Like he did what he needed to do to make sure that Dahlia always had a smile on her face and he just like loved her so much like you could just tell like he's always loved her he's always wanted to be there for her and you know they just like didn't have the right timing before but now they do and it was just really sweet and he was just so patient and loving and like he would do anything to make her happy and I really love that and I even love like her anxiety depression representation because it definitely felt real and it definitely felt understandable like how she was feeling and why she was feeling those things and yeah it was just really sweet and I really brought I definitely recommend it. It was a fun rom-com kind of vibe. A fun romance. I love when books kind of touch on serious topics on a light-hearted way. Like you still get that depth of the character but it's still, you know, it's like a breezy little romance at the end of the day. But, I mean, I understand that sometimes it's not done too well but in this book I felt like it was done well in terms of her representation and also his like things that he needed to like deal with and things like that. Yeah, I really enjoyed this one. I think I gave this one 4.5 so yeah. Honestly, a solid read and a solid second book in my November wrap up. The next book that I read was The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber. And I have been wanting to read this, as you guys know. It's probably been in quite a few TBR videos, but I finally got to it because I just like wanted to see, wanted to read the sequel. Everyone was talking about A Curse for True Love, so I wanted to read the second one. And let me tell you, the ending went very crazy. A lot went down. I actually listened to this um, through audiobook, so I felt like I was like being told a fairy tale. It was a very nice experience so I definitely recommend if you're into that but I yeah definitely loved it I feel like the start of it and maybe even like half of it was a little bit of a slow burn in terms of like I just knew something crazy was going to happen towards the end but like I don't know how to explain it I just felt like there was so much craziness happening but I love the way Stephanie Garber writes like her writing is so beautiful and like fairy tale-esque it literally feels like you're in a fairy tale and I love it so much but anyway 
I really enjoyed this. This is the second book in the series and I gave this one a four stars as well. I probably already put up a mood reading vlog which I discussed this book in so you'll definitely hear my thoughts more in there but I did really enjoy it so I gave this one four stars but that was the third book I read in November and the last book in my wrap up is a fun little quick read that I really just wanted to read because I've been wanting to read it for a while. I said read so many times but I read The Summertime Pretty by Jenny Han and this one was an okay read for me. I actually kind of had high hopes going into this because the show is really fun to watch and very you know cheesy it's a fun little show whatever so i had high expectations for the book but it kind of fell flat for me a little bit i felt like belly came off as a very whiny annoying person and i hate that because i did enjoy her character in the show belly just was kind of annoying and maybe it's just like to show that people in their teenage years are just like that you know they're annoying but yeah i don't know i felt like she wasn't as annoying in the show even though she did some questionable things in the second season but um yeah this just kind of fell apart for me because of that but it was nice to read it because i finally kind of got like the behind the scenes and i got to like visualize the characters or like the actors in the characters while i was reading as well so it kind of like flowed for me easier but yeah i did enjoy it just not my favorite i think book so we'll have to see how the second and third book in the series um go through i'm gonna give this one a 3.75 like it wasn't awful and i love like the summer vibes and just like knowing like the house and everything. I really love the glimpses of the friendship between the mums because it was just very sweet and pure and they clearly just always had each other's back and I feel like you see that on the show as well and you just see like their love and affection for each other but in the book it was nice to see that as well. So I enjoyed those aspects of it. I think just Belly's character was a little bit whiny for me but that's fine. I guess as teenagers we're all like that. Um, so I gave this one 3.75 um, which I'll probably stick with. 3.75 is a pretty good rating for this book um but yeah that was the last book in my reading wrap up so there you guys go these are all the books that i read over the course of october and november this is not a hefty stack i feel like i've read this many books in one month and that's crazy to me that i was able to do that and i really hope i can kind of get back into that in december even though with vlogmas it's a little bit stressful anyway but that's pretty much all the books that i read in the past two months i'm very excited to see what i'm going to be reading in december and i also know that i'm going to be reading a few christmasy books so i'm very excited for that as well but yeah anyway thank you guys so much for watching i really really appreciate it so much and i'll catch you guys in the next video